G'day guys, John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia. Today I'd like to talk to you about uh, drones in agriculture, specifically uh, the disbursement or the spraying of chemical. Um, it's, uh, as you know, drones are, are sort of taking off, pardon the pun, in all, in all industries, and ag is no different. Um, they're used for a number of things in ag, one of them being um, to spray chemical, and it could be a pesticide, it could be a herbicide, it could be a fertilizer, it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, it's not just as simple as getting your license, get a REOC, go buy the drone, go spray. It actually doesn't work that way. Um, there are a number of companies putting out um, drones now that can disperse chemical. I know DJI have got their second incarnation of their, their ag spray drone. I think Foxtech have got one and the X aircraft have got one. Anyway, you, it, these guys, you can make them yourself, I guess. All you need is a pump and a tank, right? Um, but it's not just that simple. There is further licensing required to be able to disperse the chemical. And without going into the minute details, the nitty gritty behind it is, um, the, the actual chemicals lay, they, they call it compl staying compliant with the label, uh, meaning the chemical has to be dispersed in a way that meets the standard, i.e. droplet size, what happens with wind drift and wind currents and turbulent air under, under drones and whatnot else. As you know, uh, you might be aware, the RMAX system of machines, that's that dirty big helicopter looking aircraft, uh, already has these approvals, that machine has the approval. And again, it's not just the pilot and the, and the company that needs approval to spray with a drone on top of the CASA certification, there's the drone itself. Um, you can't simply get a, any drone you like and start spraying chemical with it. It, it goes way beyond that. Um, it's, it's a little complex and it's a little involved, but uh, don't be too scared. If you are thinking about getting a drone and, and you want to use it for any sort of chemical disbursement, i.e. You know, pesticide or herbs, herbicide or whatever poisons or fertilizer you're using, um, come and see us. Um, we can help you uh, get onto the right track, put you in the right direction, get you through um, the certifications. There are some, there is some stuff to study and an exam that has to take place, um, and I can, I can certainly arrange all of that for you. Uh, but please don't just think you can go and buy a drone, put chemical in it, and go spraying it. In fact, before I jumped on here, I went and had a bit of a look at, at some of the fines that are that are out there. The 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 agencies that 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 uh, look after this part of the environment. Obviously, there's things like the EPA for one and Agricultural Victoria for the other and all those sort of people. They take this stuff very, very seriously and the fines are huge, 100 grand plus in some cases. Um, and so you would not want to be doing something with a drone, spraying some sort of chemical, not realizing the property next door is getting smashed. Now, but the, the chats I had just recently, the legal side of it is one thing and you'll, you know, the strict liability and all that comes into play, but then, you know, the person's property who you just destroyed um, is obviously gonna come looking for compensation as well. So it, it can get really messy, uh, and there is certainly licensing requirements. So if anyone's telling you that you can simply, uh, CASA give you the approval, or you can simply go and buy a drone, put some chemical in it and go spray, that is completely incorrect. What you will need, just in a nutshell, you will obviously need the REPL. Now, the license will need to be weight categorized based on the takeoff weight of the drone. Um, not the empty weight. So if your drone weighs 24 kilo empty and you put 10 kilo of, of liquid in it, um, you know, 10 liters, 10 kilograms of liquid, you've now bunched over the 25 kilo mark, you're gonna have to go and get certified to fly the drone takeoff ready. So if it weighs 34 kilo full, then the sub 25 kilo licensing isn't gonna cover it. So that's one. The business will need the REOC, obviously, to operate the drones. It's that you can't fly in the excluded category or anything like that. Um, different for land owners, and I'll come back to that in a minute, but I'm talking commercial here. Um, then, of course, the business will need licensing for the chemical side of spraying, uh, aerial application, and the pilot will also need uh, certification for the pilot side of it. And on top of that, the drone itself needs to be accepted and, and signed off on and all that sort of stuff because of droplet size and wind drift and all that sort of stuff. So you can see that it's multi-layered, right? Um, the landowner side of things, uh, things can change a little because as you know, there's that, uh, there's that uh, allowance for landowners to operate drones now without the need for certification and whatnot else. But that doesn't remove the chemical side of it. Okay, so look, if you're looking at wanting to do that or you are already on that path and you've just saw this video and gone, uh oh, I didn't know this, please get in touch with us. I'm happy to help you. I can certainly help you. Um, you can get, you can call our office directly if you like on 
6112, it's down here, 8551. You can email me directly at uh, john at fpvaustralia.com.au or the normal email address of training at fpvaustralia.com.au will help get you on your way. Um, I hope that's answered some of your questions. If not, fire me an email or give us a call and let us know. If you are going to fly a drone today, tomorrow, next week or next month, please do so safely and responsibly. We do need safe skies for all. Enjoy. Thank you.